Well, hello everybody. It's Topher from the Dapper Boys. <clears throat> I've been getting a lot of requests about what's going on and what happened to me in my story. So, I thought I'd take this evening while I'm soaking in the hot tub. Um, something I pretty much do every day if possible just because it helps my joints feel better and the muscle pain. Um, but let me tell you my story. In November of 2015, I came down with a cold, and it was like a regular cold, um, and I had a little lymph node that popped out, and a couple of weeks later, the cold kind of went away, but the knot didn't, and it was at that time I, I made an appointment, and the earliest I could get in was like January 10th, so... I go to this appointment thinking that I was going to walk in and get an antibiotic and, you know, be on my merry way. Um, the guy came in, he had an assistant with him, excuse me, <clears throat> hard to swallow when you don't have any salivary glands, so, <clears throat> sorry about that. Um, he comes in with his assistant and they checked me out, basic vitals and everything, and then all of a sudden he lays me back on the table and he looks at my neck and he goes to start pushing around and feeling. He has the assistant to look at it and they kind of excuse themselves from the room for a moment. And I was just sitting there kind of thinking, okay, that seems a little odd. And like a minute later, like seven people came into the room, other doctors and things, and PAs, and they all came around the table, and they asked me if they would mind letting them check me out, and I was like, sure, so they all did and everything, and um, they kind of huddled in the corner for a moment, and then he turned back to me, and he said, well, um, Topher, we're going to send you for some tests. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, I said, well, I get that appointment when I go to check out. And he's like, no, you're going now. Well, that's when I kind of started getting a little suspicious. So I went and had several different scans done. Um, they'd already done blood work that day. They took some more additional blood work. And I was sent home with no antibiotic. And two days later, the phone rang. And I just happened to be at home by myself. And I answered, and it was the doctor. And he literally told me over the phone that I had cancer. First of all, in the movies, they don't do that. They call you in and say, we want to go over your results or your report. Um, so, I was like, um, this can't be real. And he goes, yes, and we're going to be sending you to an oncologist, a radiologist, and a surgeon, um, which is actually one of the best surgeons in the United States at UVA, which is University Hospitals in Charlottesville, Virginia. So, we went... I met with him, I was tested positive for squamous cell carcinoma, HPV virus, and it was found on my tonsils and down my esophagus. So very quickly we had to make arrangements and I had to have the initial robot surgery done, um, which by the way all I can remember was when the anesthesiologist came in, I asked him if he was good, and he goes, oh yeah, I'm good, and I called him a cabana boy, and I said, well, okay, cabana boy, I said, here's your test, I said, I want a double, and he goes, I got you, so they started the IV drip, they had me on the gurney, they were wheeling me into the operating room, and that's the last thing that I remember is there's the special robot that there's only 
I don't know if there's one or maybe a few of them in the United States that they sat on my chest and all, all I can remember is it looked like shiny metal um, like a sea anemone or something and I can remember that's the last thing I remember so when I woke up um, they had removed my tonsils and they had to scrape the entire lining down inside my esophagus just to be on the safe side and then they sent me home and I highly recommend before if you have surgery for something like this have a pre-plan of someone being with you at all times uh, you have to sleep propped up in like in a recliner um, that will definitely help because I was raw there's no there's no ability to like oh we'll put skin grafts down his esophagus no I was pure flesh all the way down to the point that um, when I was able to kind of get my mouth open I could look back and you could see through a mirror or, or others could see um, you could actually see my carotid artery and you could see the blood pumping that's that's how much they had to remove so then fast forward about two weeks and I then had to have external laceration done and they took out 59 lymph nodes and three of those had cancer in them and one of them was bulbous is what they called it so it was inflamed but it was kind of bulging out to the side and they were really concerned because it was wrapped around part of my carotid artery so um, they were able to get it out they took a total of 59 and sewed me up and went back home and then literally two weeks later I started chemo and radiation at that time um, I'd studied up enough to learn a few things. One, do not eat out of anything with a metal utensil or an aluminum can or anything of that sort. Trust me, that feeling is undescribable. Right? Um, two, I knew that going into chemo, white blood cell count was going to be an issue. Um, we had our house entirely sterilized. Um, I limited uh, the family that was with me were to be with me and I limited myself from having interaction or being around anyone else for this time during chemo and radiation uh, because the one thing you don't want to do is catch a virus or a cold. So family got really good about when people would come. They did like a meal train. Uh, for my mom and Jared just to help, you know, kind of help take care of them, knowing that I couldn't eat. I already had my stomach feeding tube in, and I was having to use it. Uh, we were crushing my pills <clears throat> with a pill crusher, so um, she would mix, mom would mix it with something like pudding or light yogurt or anything just to try to get it down me. It got to the point that I couldn't even tolerate that so then she crammed them into powder mix it with my feeding tube food and would literally syringe it in that way so at least I would keep it going um, after that I started the chemo I had six chemo and 33 radiation treatments and I developed what I call chemo brain humor Lord, do you take a look at yourself and your life and the world around you. And, boy, I fell for it, too. Um, we get caught up so bad in little things, frivolous things, things people say, things people do, what the dog did wrong, you know. And it makes you, after having something like this, it makes you look at things differently and I definitely have no filter any longer so when you speak to me 
you get what my brain thinks because there's no filter. Um, during all this, um, uh, June 23rd, uh, 2016 was the day I finished my last radiation treatment. And, um, it was very humbling and difficult, um, to go out into the courtyard and ring the cancer bell. And I was diagnosed as stage four, um, HPV, squamous cell carcinoma, cancer. Uh, it had become very aggressive very quickly and was just brought on by a cold. So, word to the wise, when you have a cold and you get a lymph node somewhere, anywhere, that seems a little out of normal, go get it checked. They told me had I went sooner, I would have probably not had to have gone through the severities that I have. Um, I'm very honest, I'm very frank, but I'm very humble, and I'm hopefully very inspiring, because I'm now going on my fourth year, and I still have issues and effects that I deal with on a regular basis. Um, I just recently, four weeks ago, had to have well, now, a total of 11 teeth, which are all my back teeth on the top and bottom, are gone. And I had to have my jawbone on the right side where the radiation was going in. I had to have it ground down to remove all the dead bones from necrosis. So, that's kind of been a struggle. Um, weight is definitely an issue. Um, after I was completely done and... We'll, I'll do another video about what I refer to as coming out of the clouds. Right now, I don't want to get into that. Um, that's a whole video in itself. But um, after it was all said and done, it gets, when you think radiation is over, it's not. It's just getting revved and it continues to rev in your body. Uh, you can't be around other people because of so much radiation in your system. You need to have your own towels and linens that, and bedding that has to be washed frequently. Um, my mom and them used rubber gloves so that way they wouldn't touch it. Um, so you have to be very, very conscientious. So I've now had the teeth removed and one of the weird questions that I get from a lot of people, oops, I just about fell down in the hot tub. Sorry about that. Um, one of the more frequent questions I get is because I talk about Dapper Strong and the word adventure. Well, that came to be because I couldn't say out loud the word cancer when I found out. Every time I tried, I just fell apart. So, Jared and I talked and he said, you know, we've been through so much together in life. This is just another adventure. And I was like, aha. That's it. I can carry on a conversation and discuss what's going on with me, but wherever I would use the word cancer, I referred to it as the adventure. And um, I like to always dress nice. Um, I'm a clothing designer, interior designer, landscape designer, and I had my own business for several years. And um, our tagline was always be dapper. So people all around the world that ordered from us, uh, we made bow ties and we made fashion couture, pet wear, and that sort of thing. So people around the world always knew us as, you know, the name of our company and then our tagline was always be dapper. Well, a friend of mine who's very close and dear uh, ended up in a conversation saying, Topher, 
you're dapper strong. And boy, it went right through me. It, it literally tore me up with glee more than anything else. So that's where Dapper Strong came to be. And it's not just my word, it's for you and for anyone else that may be going through this or have experienced it or is now entering this phase. Um, Dapper Strong is keeping your head up, being positive, inspire yourself, and inspire others. Um, my motto is find the good in everything, no matter how small. And I have to say, through surgeries, after chemo, after radiation, after teeth removal, there's days when I wanted to give up. And I just kept telling myself, dapper strong, and find the good in everything, no matter how small. And every day, I would have to struggle to find that one little thing. And I'll give you a little example. My hair had already fallen out. I was completely bald, no beard, no eyebrows, no nose hairs, gone. It all came out. I was so weak and so tired, um, but yet my mom got me out onto the front porch. It was a nice evening. And we were sitting on the porch, and I just broke down and kind of gave her a heart to heart. But I said, Mom, I don't know if I can do this. And she's like, Well, she said, You're going to make it just fine through this. And she said, You'll see a sign. And I'd be dog. It's like the message came immediately. I'm sitting on my covered porch closest to the house and a monarch butterfly came flying onto the porch and came and landed on my knee and didn't move. It just turned and looked at me and slowly just flapped its wings. And it stayed there for a couple of minutes. And I remember mom saying, see? And I'm like, what? And she goes, you just found the good in today. Don't give up and be dapper strong. So that's what I did. And I live every day that way. I've created the page, The Dapper Boys on YouTube, for the reason to maybe help inspire others. And feel free to ask questions, and I'll try to ask, answer them any way I can. I'm honest and upfront. I won't sugarcoat, but I will tell you, if you're watching this and you're going through this, some of my videos need to be for your caregivers. Some of the videos will be for you and them, like this one. I'm not candy coating, like I said. Um, there's rough times ahead, and you're going to experience that. But there is a silver lining. Inspire others, inspire yourself, and keep going. So, I think I'm going to stop right there for now. And I just want you to know I love you all, and I'm very humbled. Uh, another video I'm going to be doing soon is regarding me being a world anomaly now. And... So don't compare yourself exactly to what I'm going through. Just by some chance, what's occurred to me through chemo and radiation has created such an anomaly dealing with my metabolism that there's no one else in the world they have found like me. And I'll get into that a little bit. And I know some of you don't have issues, some may. Um, after my radiation things was over, after several, probably two months after that, I had my stomach tube, feeding tube removed. And the reason was, is I was beginning to eat soft soups, foods, puddings, anything wet, liquidy, fattening, and I had gained up to 128 pounds. 
so that was a good 25 pound gain almost so I felt that it was time and okay I was getting my energy back and I had it taken out things were going well for a while um, but, and I had such great energy that um, I wasn't able to work because I've had balance issues but I wanted to do what I could so for example my little old neighbor across the street who can barely walk and get around himself um, I went over one morning way early before I knew he got up and I sat down and I went and weed eated his entire flower bed in his front yard and I roughed up the mulch and everything and I just got it looking nice for him just because I wanted to do something for somebody else. He didn't have to ask. And it was very humbling when he came out and he started yelling my name because I guess he knew it was me. Oops. But he told me that he prays for me every day and I appreciated that. And I pray for him as well and for everyone. So I try every day to get somebody a smile, even on days when I'm down, just because that may be the only good they have in their day. So help me help them. I hope you share my video. I hope you like and subscribe to the Dapper Boys. I'm here on my second chance of life. I already left once. There was no room in heaven for me yet. So, I had to come back. I still have a purpose. And there's things that I must get done before my time's up. So I think I found it. I'm now beginning on working on doing public speaking with other groups and forums and at my local cancer center um, just so I can help others get through what we're going through. So, from Tover, with love, always be dapper and find the good in everything, no matter how small.